Hello everybody and welcome to What's in the Box. Today myself and John are having a look at some War Machine for something completely different. Yeah. So it's not Kator, it's not Signar, it's not Menoth, it's not Crix, no. it's the Crucible Guard. Yeah. So these guys are an Ordic faction, mm -hmm. which is very cool. And this is the All-in-One Army Box. Well, it's just called the Army Box this time. Yeah. This is what you're going to use to actually get yourself started in with this faction. Yeah. And I've, I've been enjoying Privateer doing these, so... Whoa, there's a lot of stuff. There is a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> Plastic Warjacks. Yeah. That's always nice. So, uh, you have the list there, John, so yep. if you want to figure out who's who, I'll start debagging stuff here. Okay, so I believe these two Warjacks may be the same kit, maybe two of the same, perhaps? Um, uh, with, with a different weapon spoon. Because uh, we have a Vindicator and a Suppressor, and I believe they're on the same chassis. Ah, I see. Alright, so let's have a look at the assembly instructions. We get ins assembly instructions. Thank you, Privateer. <laughs> uh, so here they are here. Uh, nice 3D ones, which are really simple. Yep. So you've got Suppresso, uh, Toro, and Vindicator in a box. Mm -hmm. So you are right. They are on the same, just with a different weapon sprue, yep. which is fine. Uh, we'll take a quick gander at the sprues. So you've got your shoulders, you've got your main body, You've got parts of your boiler, ball joint here. I'm not sure what these components are. I'll figure that out. And then you've got the front of the torso here. I'm guessing yeah. this may up pretty much all be the upper body. Yeah. Uh, we then have this, which looks to be a lot of the, the other smaller components. Mm -hmm. so you've got leg components in here. You've got smokestacks. Uh, you've got the waist components here and some other little armored components in through as well. Nice and simple. We then come to what makes it special, which is the weapon sprue. So, we will talk uh, rules in the second half of this video, but right now, this is uh, your weapon arm, so ooh, big mace, and some kind of al alchemical gun. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting lots of poison effects from these guys. Yeah. So, the other warjack is basically the same, except I believe it's just this sprue that's different. Ah, smaller sprue. Uh, because this is a suppressor. Um, yeah. particular, I think. Yeah, because the other one's a Vindicator. Right, what's what's it look to be armed with just on the, the sheet there? Um, so, Two big fists? Yeah. Yeah, because you've got, like, Those. big steam-powered components here, and then you've got the fronts of the fist, which look to have big knuckles on them. They look yeah. like they'd hurt if they punched you. <laughs> and then you've got two heads? Or is it... No, it's two halves of a head. So, I do like Privateer's plastic quality. Mm -hmm. It's very nice. It's on the up and up. Yeah. Alright, so let's start grabbing other components. Okay. Ooh, you get what appears to be a steampunk nebelwerfer. A steampunk nebelwerfer. Yeah. So this is the Dragon's Breath Rocket Weapon Crew. Mm hmm. So, oh, it's resin with a little bit of metal in here. The detail quality looks great, though. It yep. looks super, super sharp. So you've got the, the main weapons. Looks like it's firing dust bins. It does, yeah. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, we've got main chassis. Mm -hmm. You've got the wheels. Ah, now these all need a little love and attention just where the gate points are. Yeah. But nothing we haven't seen before. Uh, we have components for the, the gun carriage. We have a, a little blast shield. And then we have three crew members. So we've got one guy kneeling down. Yep. We have another guy carrying a spare shell. Wow. It's a pretty hefty looking shell, isn't it? Yep. Although I don't think it's explosives. And then we have one guy. Okay, I like this. He's got binoculars instead of pointing. Yes. <laughs> That's a nice touch. A weapon crew leader does not point. He binoculars. Yes. He binocs. <laughs> oh. Alright, uh, if you open those up, because I know they're sure. here. Uh, we then have combat alchemists. Small unit of three guys. I'm expecting them to do lovely, lovely, horrible things like uh, acid sprays and stuff, but we'll see. Uh, I am liking the design change. Look at the gas mask on this guy. That's pretty badass, isn't it? Yeah, with the, the big respirators on the back and the amount of detail that they went to around the actual waist just for stuff hanging. Yep. He's got grenades. He's got a grenade in his hand. <laughs> uh, we then have this guy. Uh, again, lovely gas mask. Lots of details. Ooh, that looks like it's going to be a pain to remove. This gate location here. Yeah, it does a little. You've got a recess here. We'll see how that goes. Uh, we then have our last guy, who appears to be a, a duplicate sculpt, which we've seen Privateer do quite often. Yep. And then we have more arms with bombs on them. And 
I guess here. So, pardon all the noise, by the way. That is there. Right. They definitely didn't want these to open, did they? <laughs> there, there, just. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> right. Uh, we then have these guys. So, I think these are like your um, Crucible Guard Rocketmen. Okay. And this. Who is this? What? Oh, um, I think he's the solo. Yeah, Trancer. Uh, Trancer? Yeah. yeah. So, we have one guy, single piece metal, who is, if I get my hand out of the way, the Trancer. This is weird. He's almost, it's like he's wearing a straight jacket. <laughs> no, he is wearing a straight jacket. Yeah. That's, that's really cool looking. That'll be interesting to see how some people paint that. Mm -hmm. And then these are our basic infantry. Again, these are metal and resin hybrid kits. Uh, really nicely placed on the sprue this time. Lots of cool detail. And quite a few different poses. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how these guys look whenever they're all put together. You do get some duplication, but once they're all mixed together, no big issue. Yeah. If I'm right, there should be rocket packs in here. There are rocket packs in here. So, ooh, those are lovely. Let me... Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, those, nice. are, those are very cool. Yeah. All right, let's pop those out of the way. Yep. Uh, so that's clamshell number one. You can mm -hmm. get all your bases and stuff in there as well, but I don't need to show you those. Okay, the next. Uh, do you want the Warcaster? Uh, yeah, if you have the Warcaster there. Okay. I can have... you pronounce the Warcaster's name? Um, Very top of the list. Um, Aurum Adeptus Sylvester. I think that wasn't a bad attempt. You? No, no. So here he is. Okay. <laughs> I'm loving this. Okay, so we have me and Buddy over Warcaster carrying a big smoking alchemical vial. Mm -hmm. And you see the way you've got the the join points here on the front? Yeah. Look at his head. There's a big gas mask. Huge gas mask with the really nice big flat hat. That's yep. really cool. Uh, you've got his power pack for his back, which is nice. A couple of little extra gubbin bits. And mm -hmm. then his other hand, which is a very small component. Yeah. Uh, you'll see it better once I, I actually get everything built. Now, you'll notice I am trying to... Keep everything in a pile. Keep everything in its own pile, so that whenever I do come to build this, because this, this is War Machine, I want to build this. So, the next the next guy's pretty simple, and we've seen him before. Yeah. Uh, this is Gorman the Wolf. No, he used to be metal. Yes, he's now resin in this. They've now converted him to resin, and... Ugh. You don't like the big gates? Uh, this is something... Privateer, this is my my one gripe for your stuff. It's just these big, big gates. I mean, look at that. Yeah. Does it really need to be that big? I would say it does. I would say there's there's a that's a fairly high pressure cast. Uh, yeah, but if it's a high pressure cast, it shouldn't need as big a point. If it's a low pressure cast, you might need the bigger point to let it flow in. Well, we're not experts. I'm unsure, but the detail is razor sharp, and you know if you've seen Garvin de Wolfie before, you know what he does. You know the shenanigans he plays. Mm -hmm. Finally, we have the big dudes. No, uh, actually, while I remember, Go on. for anyone at home, uh, if you're working with those big gate points, one thing I found that really, really helps, mm. take your pin vise and actually drill multiple holes around it, and then you're only cutting a smaller point around it to actually get that off and then smooth it down. Or use a razor saw. Or use a razor saw. I don't trust myself with a razor saw. I've cut myself with those before. They're not fun. <laughs> right, big guys. Uh, yes, big guys. These are the Crucible Guard Assault Troopers, and these are epic. You like them? I like these a lot. Alright, so it's uh, five and a liter? Five and a Well, yeah, four and a liter, isn't it? Oh, four and a liter, sorry. Alright, so, we have a look. They are big Gorgeous and detail. They've almost got a mercenary vibe to them with the, uh, the, the faceplates here. They're almost nautical. Yeah, they feel really a bit nice. nautical, don't they? Yeah, um, and then you've got the nice big armor plates down around the bottom of the cloaks and stuff, which is nice. They, they kind of feel Bioshock. A little bit. Uh, they're all quite similar. I wonder, does the leader have his head exposed? He does not. Are you sure that's the leader? Because there is one with a face mask open. Uh, oh, actually, yeah, that'll be your leader then. Yeah. Face mask open. Easy to tell who he is. Mm -hmm. uh, loving the details on these. Weapons, I'm going to hand them over. Yeah, I will just... Oh, big, big hammers. It's hammer time. They're very cool. Those are lovely. It's kind of Reinhardt rocket hammer. Hey, Salhoff is my hero. I love Knight Rider. Position. Mm -hmm. 
Very nice. I also like the the way these are actually set. You've got this uh, this peg joint. Yeah. So you are going to be able to pose these a bit. So you can have a nice bit of variation in them, even if some of the bodies are duplicates. Yeah. Right. There's only one thing to do here, John. I think you have to go and build all this. <laughs> happy i love building new war machine stuff just yep. because it's a world that i love and i always want to revisit if i can ever get the chance yeah i rarely get the chance to play but i still love the game okay we'll be right back hi everybody we're back they are built and uh i had a whoops <laughs> yeah so you we we kind of built like half each ish How yeah it worked you, out. you got the the two units and i got the other guys yeah so you were talking to me off camera about the Warjacks, what were they like? Uh, they were actually surprisingly intricate. Mm. Now, uh, I had expected to possibly build all of this in about two hours. Being Privateer Press, it's normally a couple of bits and you're done. Yeah. The intricacy on the Warjacks, in fact, let me grab one. So this is the guy I built first. And so the legs, the toes are a component, the foot's a component, the knee's a component, the lower uh, shin's a component, the upper thigh's a component, this armoured plate's a component. Well, that's actually a lot more than what you'd expect. Yeah, and then in the arms, it's two halves to the forearm, two oh. halves to the, the upper arm, two halves to the fist. This component goes on, and it's actually got an extra little component there. Yeah. So, I mean, like I have to say, the miniature looks great. It does. But, wow, it's engineered to the balls. But what are you getting for that amount of intricacy? Are you getting a lot of posability? Uh, honestly, you've got the same posability you always had in the arms and the head. Nothing extra, really, in the legs. Right. And I think it's more just to actually get crispness to it yeah. that they're doing it. So instead of trying to cast in and around, they're casting separate components to get better detail. And it does work. Yeah. Like, uh, if I grab the other one, uh, so this guy here, even the guns in a couple of components. Yeah. You know, and then the, the smokestacks, they're three components each. Mm -hmm. You know, the main body, that's one, two, three, four, five, and then double that to about ten components. Yeah. So you're, they're not simple kits. They are something you will get to spend a bit of time with. Mm -hmm. And I think the result is pretty worth it. Yeah. Right, well, seeing as we're looking at the Warjacks, let's have a quick look at the rules, eh? Yeah, sure, go for it. So we've got the Vindicator first, if I don't bring up the, <laughs> the FAQ on it. So it's the one with the gun. Yeah. <clears throat> so Crucible Heavy Warjacks. So I'm guessing the faction is actually Crucible, not Ordic. So Ordic is more nation rather than yep. the actual faction. Which you find a little odd, because, you know, Signar is the nation of Signar, Kador is the nation of Kador. But I would I would imagine that Ord would have more... It's a small it, nation. Yeah, but I would imagine it had, like, little regional armies. Possibly. Whereas Signar and Kador are, like, the two big, almost, empires. So, like, oh, yeah. their forces are the empire's armies. Yeah. You know, they're very much the, the big players. Yeah. Uh, now, points-wise, it's only 15 points, mm -hmm. which is not bad. That's pretty cheap for a heavy warjack. Uh, speed 5, strength 11. Ooh, hello. Mm. Uh, mat 6, rat 5, we expect. Defense 11, armor 18. It's nearly as good as a Signar Jack. Uh, weapons, so it's got a multi-chambered cannon, range 12, rate of fire 1, AOE 4, power 14. Nothing to turn your nose up at. This could mince infantry that are clumped together. Mm -hmm. And then it's got the maul for a range of 2 inches, so it has essentially reach. Power of 6, power of strength 17, so that'll take lumps out of stuff. Mm -hmm. Special rules now, uh, not too many, so it's alchemically treated. When this model suffers a corrosion damage roll or fire damage roll, uh, you roll one less die. Additionally, this model never suffers the corrosion continuous effect or the fire continuous effect. So it happens once and then just... Yeah, but you roll one less dice. Yeah. So if someone's attacking it with fire, you're going to have to boost it just to get regular damage. Mm -hmm. So that's that's pretty damn tasty. Uh, the multi-chamber cannon actually has some attack types on it. So it's got... Uh, this weapon gains an additional die on damage roll against construct and undead models. So uh, decrepitation, it's called. Uh, psychoactive gas. This sounds fun. Mm -hmm. uh, living war beasts hit by the AoE gain one fury point unless they can ignore gas effects. Oh, you could frenzy someone's army so bad with this. Yeah. It's just like, oh, look, there's uh, three war beasts that you've maxed out. Both. Go attack each other. <laughs> uh, psychomorphic destabilizer is the next one. Okay. Yeah, you're, you're twisting my tongue, Privateer. Thanks. <laughs> uh, this attack causes magical damage. Models hit by the attack lose incorporeal for one round. That's nice. If you're facing something like Crix with all the ghosts. Yeah. 
Uh, it's also got steam pressure. If this model uses its normal movement to aim, this model gains plus four range that activation. <laughs> so hang on, it can essentially steam charge its grenade launcher and just go. Doosh! It's basically making a lot of steam, and when it's not using it to move, it's using it to shoot. Yeah, that's but cool. Getting sixteen inch range on that—that's huge. Yeah. Okay, next up is the suppressor. This is the guy with the fists. Mm -hmm. I'm expecting lots of punchy punchiness, and it has a range attack. <laughs> it actually has two range attacks. Okay. So exact same stat line. It's thirteen points. Yep. Cause that's cheap. Uh so uh pyrodrolic jet. <laughs> <laughs> I like how it was the word jet you got stuck up on. It was just like mm. I, I just needed a second after saying pyrodrolic. <laughs> My word. Uh it's a spray eight rate of fire one par twelve. Mm -hmm. And you've got two of those. So that I'm guessing is the big things on the back of its forearms. Yeah. The fists are power and strength fourteen. Not bad. Uh, I'll chemically treat it. We've just seen it's got dual attack, which is nice. Uh, Pyrodrolic Jet actually has three options for its attack type as well. Ice Cage. This attack causes no damage. Instead, a model hit suffers a cumulative minus two defense for one turn unless they have immunity to cold. Uh, when it's hit with three or more Ice Cage attacks in the same turn, it becomes stationary. So you could hit this for minus four defense on something? Yeah. <laughs> That's quite nice, and because it's a spray, it's auto hit. Uh, it's got an incendiary one, so this attack causes fire damage, and models hit suffer fire continuous effect. Yep, nice. Uh, it's got one called Rust. This attack causes no damage. Instead, constructs suffer minus two armor for one turn. That's rather nice. That is rather That's nice. That's debuffy. Yeah. That's kind of what I was expecting with the the alchemical style of these guys. Yeah. All right, let's go for Arum, the Warcaster. Okay. He so looks super cool. Yeah. So this will probably take a moment to get through because it is a warcaster. But here he is here, looking all badass, holding a very large, large vial of something. Mm -hmm. uh, the little components I actually discovered, they go onto the side of his power turbine in the back. Yep. I think this guy will paint up beautifully. The details are really crisp on it. I will say I did have some issues taking off some of the, the, the actual gates because they were quite huge, but they're in locations where you will never see them again, is yep. what I will say, folks. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Focus 7, mm -hmm. so I'm expecting casting. Uh, Fulmination Grenade, uh, range 6, par 1, AoE 3, par 13, magical attack, which is nice. And he's got a Purified Blade, uh, range 0.5, and power and strength of uh, 10. My brain's not working right now. <laughs> it's a Blast Weapon, uh, which is also magical. Mm -hmm. uh, he's immune to Corrosion, he's immune to Fire. He will provide you 20 at Warjack points, which is very nice. Yep. Uh, speed 6, Strength 6, Mat 6, Rat 6, Defense 15, Armor 15. <sighs> so he's not bad. No. Uh, he's got an alchemical mass, so he does not suffer gas effects. Very nice. Uh, when determining line of sight, resolving attacks, he ignores cloud effects. Very nice. Uh, he's got Field Alchemy, which is just some special bits he can do. So, uh, Emperor Fa v Vite? Vite? <laughs> oh, Privateer, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Uh, this model can cast one of its spells this activation without spending focus points. Ooh, ooh, ooh that's very nice. Uh, impenetrable Haze. Uh, center of 4-inch AoE cloud effect on this model. This AoE remains in play for one round. While this model is completely within the AoE, ranged and magic attacks targeting this model from a point of origin more than 5 inches away automatically miss. This model is not an intervening model when determining line of sight if a model more than 5 inches away. Or from a model more than 5 inches away. Last one is Super Fuel, friendly faction model, construct models, uh, currently within five of this model game plus two speed. Hang about. Hang about. He's, he's making everybody quite quick on top of them already being quite quick, I think. Yeah, but um, I'm looking at it. I don't think it works, but the, the guy who can get the plus two range, I'm wondering if you put this onto him, would that become a plus six? Mm. I think it's because it specifically says a plus four, it would only be a plus four. I'm... I'm probably wrong here. I'll have a look in a minute. Uh, so the the grenade has decrepitation, which we've seen. And then if I swipe... Oh, he's got a lot of stuff. So his feet, meta principle. While in his control range, friendly faction models gain an additional die on attack and damage rolls. Discard one die of your choice in each roll. Additionally, when an enemy model is destroyed while in his control range, a friendly faction model in his control range can move D3, remove D3 damage points. <laughs> this is hilarious. 
Uh, it lasts for one turn. Mm -hmm. So he's basically saying, okay, big damage round, let's go. Additional dice on damage, you can still boost your war jacks. That's four dice, removing one. Mm -hmm. That's horrendous. Uh, he's got Explosivo, we've seen that before. Uh, revive. Return one destroyed grunt to a friendly faction unit uh, with one unmarked damage box. Uh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, Stygian Abyss. On a critical hit, the model hit suffers blind for one round. Uh, a model suffering from blind cannot make ranged or magic attacks, gains minus four mat and defense. Uh, cannot run, charge, or make slam, power, or, power, or trample power attacks. It must forfeit either its movement or combat action during its next activation. Uh, blind can be shaken. So that's a uh, cost of 3, range 10, power 12, and it's offensive. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Oh look, you're colossal! Blind. Although it is only whenever you get a critical, so you might want to boost this one. Yep. Uh, he's got a pile of other ones, but this is going to take ages to go through, so I think we'll move on. Yeah. We have Gorman de Wolfie. This is the classic alchemist from the mercenaries. He's yes. still a mercenary in this box, but he looks great. I will say I do have one or two gripes about the actual cast on this one. So, uh, I remember this model used to be a metal. They've now converted him to the plastic resin. Mm -hmm. There are one or two little bubble points in here where yeah. there are little gaps you're going to have to fix. So you see just at the back of his heel here, mm -hmm. it's out of sight, so it's not huge. But just right here on this foot, there's just a little bubble there, which it's kind of annoying. But other than that, really nice. Still just as crisp and good looking as ever. Yep. If you know War Machine, you know no Garmin de Wolfie, so we'll not lose time on him. Okay. Units then? Uh, well, there's one more solo. Oh. The new one, Trancer, who is actually a Crucible Guard model. Okay. So that is this gentleman here. And like I said, he is indeed in a straight jacket. <laughs> so I have to wonder what the story behind this one is. Uh, I probably would want to pick up the Forces book for this faction, yeah. just because that's where you always get your backstory. And your flavor. Mm -hmm. So, speed 6, strength 7, uh, map 4, rat 3, gods. <laughs> Defense 13, armor 11. He's got a force blow, uh, which is a power strength of 14, but with a mat of 4? Not a hope. Not a hope. That is gar garbage mat, garbage rat. Uh, he does have special abilities, which is why you're going to take him. He only costs 3 points. Yeah. Uh, so he's got a force barrier. Uh, this model gains plus 2 defense against ranged attack rolls, does not suffer blast damage. Very nice. Uh, he's got Mental Force. This model can use Mental Force at the beginning of each attack. If it does, all attacks and damage rolls resulting from the attack are boosted, which is nice. Mm -hmm. After the attack is resolved, this model suffers D3 damage points. You'll use that once. He's got 5 damage. What yeah. the hell? Uh, let's pick something else. A Steady can't be knocked down. Force Blow has Smite. Uh, a model directly hit by this attack can be slammed D6 directly away from this, this model. If the model hit has a larger base than the attacking model, it is moved only half distance uh, instead. Which uh, is like a, a push. Yeah, it's basically him going, oh, you're too close to Morcaster. <laughs> not great. I'm not a huge fan of this. There, there must be... I'm sure there's got to be some mitigation in there. There has to be a synergy in there that works with him. Yeah, it's probably something I haven't read. Yeah. But just on face value, I'm not a fan. Right, Combat Alchemists. That's the, the unit of three gents with the grenades. Okay. These, I think, are going to give you great chances for some uh, some very cool painting. Yep. Because in the artwork, you see the, the little grenades? They're yep. actually shown as glass. Ah. And they're glowing, mm. which is very cool. I love the detail on these. These were super simple to put together. Let's get into what they can do. So they've mm. got alchemical grenades. Uh, power 12, range 6, AoE 3, not bad. They've got a dagger just in case, but that's power and strength of 7. Mm -hmm. Do not get into combat, please. Uh, especially with a, a mat of 5. Rat 6, not bad. Uh, defense 14 is really good. Immune to corrosion and fire is good. They have the alchemical mask. Uh, they have prowl. So while they have concealment, it gains stealth. Nice. They can throw smoke bombs, which is good. And the alchemical grenades, they have three types. So they have acid blast, so it's just a corrosion continuous effect. Uh, Blood of Ursian. Uh, this attack causes magical damage. Damage. Uh, on a critical hit, upkeep spells, anime on the model hit or slash unit immediately expire. That could be very useful if someone's really just tanked themselves up. Yep. Uh, then the ice gauge as well, which we've seen before. Nice little unit. And yep. actually, how much did it cost? Seven points for a leader and two grunts. That's pretty damn cheap. Okay. Crucible Guard Rocket Man. These guys, there are a lot of them. But this box, I believe, does come with all the unit attachments. 
Uh, there's one unit attachment option and a officer option. So these guys uh, have gunfighter. They also have flight, which is really nice. Uh, they've got a breather. They don't suffer gas effects. Mm -hmm. uh, strafing run, which is an order. Effective models gain plus two speed and reposition five this turn. At the end of an activation in which it did not run or feel a charge, a model with reposition five can move five inches. That's lovely. Yeah. So it's nip out, hit, nip back, come and get me. I, what is the... Um... How many is there in a unit? Uh, so it's a leader in five uh -huh. or a leader in nine. Leader. And then you have unit attachments. You get like an additional four models in there. So you can have this rocking up at 14 models. Yeah. Uh, single box unit, uh, 15 points for the top unit without the unit attachments is quite nice. Yep. Uh, the gra they, have a gra <laughs> they have a gravity bomb. <laughs> okay, so it's a range of four, AOE three, power 12. Uh, with a rat of six, not bad, but it's cumbersome. This model cannot attack with this weapon and with another weapon on the same turn, so it's one or the other. Skydrop. Attacks from this weapon ignore cover and elevation. Models with flight do not suffer blast damage from this attack. Mm -hmm. So they can basically do a power 12 bombing run on someone. That's really nice. Mm. So you get them to move up seven, drop, reposition. Whee! We're away. Show some of them off because yeah, they, they are beautiful. They are very cool models. All right, so there's there's a lot of them, but let's grab some of them. So this is one of our standard guys, I believe. I would lay odds that this is probably a unit leader. Maybe because he's actually got the gravity bomb there. Uh, we're seeing some really interesting tech, and this is one of your unit attachments. See the way he has a different gun? Yeah. I do like the flight stands that Privateer have done for these. Mm -hmm. Now there is an absolute ton of different poses in this. And these guys are in that lovely turquoise with some like brass finish. Yeah, they're going to paint up gorgeously. Right, let's quickly jump on to. They have a crucible guard rocket man captain. Mm -hmm. So that's their officer. He's costing you four points. Same stats, same loadout, pretty much. Uh, does he have anything? Tactic swift hunter, uh, and the usual stuff. Okay, so nothing hugely different. And then the rocket man gunner. They have a slug gun for a power fourteen. And uh, they're a jack hunter. This model gains an additional die on its melee and range damage rolls against war jacks. That's very nice. Yep. So, good unit, I would say. We then have the assault troopers. These are the big heavies. I love these models. I love these models for two reasons. Their simplicity and their style. Yeah. So, let's bring them in. A couple of them are there, that there, that there. And, ta-da! They are really nicely designed. Mm -hmm. I love the nautical feel to them. But it, it feels like it's nautical gear that's been converted to battlefield gear. Yeah, it's been converted to like big rebreather units and stuff like that. Yeah. And these guys just, they feel like huge guys, not people rocking around in power armor suits. Yeah. Which is nice. So, uh, you can have a leader in 2 for 8, leader in 4 for 13. They have thermal hammers. Range 2, power and strength of uh, 13. And they have a special thing here, if I can get it to come up. What are you? I do not know what you are. It's a fire symbol with like a, a little pair of stars to it. Probably critical fire or something mm. like that. They're immune to corrosion, immune to fire. Speed 5, they're slow. Uh, strength 6, mat 7, rat 4, they're not shooting. Uh, defense 11, armor 16. Mm -hmm. They have an ashen veil. This model has concealment. Uh, living enemy models without immunity to fire uh, suffer minus 2 to attack rolls while within 2 of this model. That's nice. Yeah. They have a breather, uh, they have carapace, so this model gains plus four armor against free strike damage rolls and range damage rolls. That puts them to armor 20. Mm -hmm. So these guys, you could probably just, if you have a caster in this faction that can get extra movement into your guys, put them with these guys and just have them run past. <laughs> free strike, don't care. Don't care, armor 20, yeah. Yeah. Uh, then you've got the thermal hammers have brutal charge, so plus two to a charge uh, attack damage rolls. And flame burst, when this model boxes an enemy model with this weapon, so that kills a one point or a one wound model. Uh, enemy models within one of the box models suffer fire continuous effect. Ding. They're throwing auras around like they're, it's like they're just on fire. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're alchemists, so you expect a lot of chemical stuff to be working with. Yep. And our final unit uh, is the Dragon's Breath Rocket Crew. The uh, the steampunk nebel verker. Yes, it will nerf nebels. <laughs> Uh, now, I will say one thing. I was wrong whenever I looked at these in the first half. What I thought was an armor plate is actually a book. <laughs> I was looking at it. What we thought there. was a blast shield was a book. Yeah. Uh, easy, easy, easy mistake. This went together really nicely. Yeah, it looks gorgeous. It is. It's It's got such a great style to it. Mm. 
And I just love the fact that they have a commander on here uh, with binoculars looking over the top going, what do I see? What mildly offends me today? That's what I'm saying. This mildly offends me. But you So I'm saying a, a ranged leader in something shouldn't be pointing. He should be binocking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can't argue with this. Yeah. Uh, points wise, five points. So it's quite cheap. Yeah. Right. They are slow. Okay. They are super slow. Speed two on the gunner. Well, it is a... It is a big gun. It is a gun carriage, yeah. Yep. Uh, strength 6, mat 6, rat 5. Rat 5 on an artillery piece is actually not bad. I've seen worse. Yep. Uh, immune to corrosion and fire. Uh, defense 12, not bad. Armor 14, not bad. Uh, the rocket itself is range 14, rate of fire 1, AOE 4, and 14 power. Mm-hmm. Uh, they do have a sword for power and strength 9, but you do not want to be getting close to this. <laughs> However, your grunts who are with you have a pair of carbines, so one each. Uh, for a power 10 at range 10. So if something's getting too close, you can still just take you a little nip You can do something, yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing I do like is they still haven't stuck minimum ranges into the game yet. Yeah. Uh, which I find a little funky, but I'm okay with. Because, you could point blank this thing, though. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Uh, so they have breathers. They are man-sized. This model is treated as a small base model and occupies the space from the bottom of its base to a height of 1.5 or 1.75 inches. So I think that's the actual gunner himself. So this guy just counts as a man. This yeah. this gun, it's not really there. So it's it's probably got the same circular template, but not the same height as yeah. something that based. Uh, mobile artillery. When this model advances as part of a normal movement, it gains plus one movement for each grunt ah, in this unit within two of the start of its advance. Mm-hmm. So it can move four in a turn. That's not awful. Yeah. Take up. If this model is destroyed, you can choose a grunt in this unit within one to be destroyed instead. It's basically, you can keep the gun running till the end. The rocket has arcing fire, which is nice, uh, and it's got withering humor. Really, they're just shout- standing shouting insults. <laughs> I shall launch my joke at you. Uh, living in undead models hit by this attack suffer minus two arm and lose tough Ooh, mm. for one turn unless they can ignore gas effects. That's nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, that is everything in this force. There's quite a lot to get your, your head around. There is, and I'm sure there are synergies in there that I'm not seeing because I yeah. haven't had enough time with it. But it's, it seems like it, it can play some interesting shenanigans on stuff. All the gas effects, all the time. Yeah. I mean, like... I, you're, either, I, you're either melting or on fire. <laughs> yeah, you're either melting on fire or... Frozen in some cases. Yeah, the, the frozen one I really like because mm. it, it's letting you do nice setups. So if you do setups and then send a jack in just to hammer into it, that could be really nice. Yeah. Right. While, anyway. while, while screaming, do you want to build a snowman? <laughs> do you want to build a snowman? That's going to be in my head for the rest of the day. Thanks, John. <laughs> Everybody get those comments in below. Has that song got stuck in your head? What do you think of the look of the new faction? We'll move on. We'll see you again soon. Okay, bye. Go ahead and check out our other content on screen now and be sure to check out beastofwar.com for the latest gaming news and gaming let's plays. And while you're at it, why not hit subscribe and remember to ding our dong. Go on, you know you want to click it. Go on.